Hey guys, in this hey guys, in this video, um, we're gonna be talking about um, how I got started in photography, how photography found me. So let's move forward. This kind of goes through my whole high school years because I studied. I took a year off, studied it, and then did that. So we're gonna talk about what progress. We made so freshman year. I took my first photography class. I even remember my photography teacher's name. I remember all my teachers' names all the way up from sixth grade and above. Um, at least the ones that made a real big impact on me in a bad way or a good way. But anyway, um. And there's actually a little catch to the end of this video. So, we're going to talk about how I got started with time. So, in freshman year, actually, in middle school, 7th, 8th grade, I took my first art class. Loved it. Um, it was a still art class. It was not really my forte, per se, but I was, uh, I was good at seeing concepts and recreating them or redrawing them however you want to say it I do better with the camera because there's not um, there's not much that I have to you know critique in that way but anyway we're, so freshman year I mean seventh grade year I took my first art class and then Eighth grade year, I took my, I believe it was my last art class, and I, I had a camera from, I would say 12 on up, I always had a camera off and on, and then I was given a blue camera, and we were actually, when I went into high school, uh, freshman year, my first period of class was on, uh, Thomas Cook was his name. If I went back to that school, I'd know exactly what building he was in because it was so easy to find. Um, but anyway, if the classes are still set up the same way. But it was the most detail-oriented class because he taught us how to look when we first started. He taught us how to go outside and look for the image. That was one of his biggest things. And um, I think that's why I have a laid back approach to photography because for me it's not about snap, 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 snap. It's finding the right moment between one person and another and being able to convey that in an image. And I think that's why a lot of my photography is more organically done than driven more more times than likely i i organically let them do what they want and then i steer them i steer them this way so i can fit everybody in the frame if it's a multi-photo multi-people picture or whatever so i did that and then I went on to do some other stuff, and because uh, in high school you have to take a gym class for at least one semester, one full ninth grade grade semester, and I remember I tried. I got out of it in middle school because of my disability, but when it came to um. High school, I wasn't able to get out of it, and that was kind of depressing for me. Um, to a point because I wasn't an athletic person. Um, my family was never an athletic people, so I just didn't grow up around it. So I wasn't really concerned. And athleticism, athletics were not my thing. Photography ended up being my thing. And I remember 
I, I put a camera down after my freshman year for a while and just finished out my high school days. And then when I finished out my high school days, I was figuring out what I wanted to do. And I had a blue camera, one of those little blue pocket cameras. Um, probably roughly just one of those little $10 Walmart cameras you can get on eBay now. Like, literally, that's what it was. It was like a Kodak PowerShot or something, or PhotoSmart, or forget what it was. But anyway, and then the one I had previously was an HP um, PhotoSmart. Like 5280 or something like that, or 5780. And then I went on to look at cameras, you know, how to take better pictures and better lighting, and how to use the camera. I'm like, they're going to show me how to use the pocket camera, and I'm going to do this very well, and I can do it, you know. And then I heard about this thing called the DSLR. I'm like, DSLR, interchangeable lenses, I can get the look I want. And then I was looking at the different apertures, and I was looking at the quality images I was receiving from the pocket camera at the time, and I was like, I need my DSLR. And it was Christmas that year. So I literally, that's the only thing I asked for Christmas, was to get me a $300 Nikon D3000. And that's how I ended up getting my first DSLR. And that was Christmas of, I believe it was... 2013, 2014, and then in 2015, 2016 is when I decided to open my business, and I knew from a very early age, age 12, that I knew I wanted to run my own business. Um, I had a neighborhood business, picking up trash around the neighborhood and uh, taking them to the dumpster uh, with a friend of mine. So it kind of all worked out that way, and um, I never really looked back, and I've had a camera ever since, and I don't usually go anymore big time without a camera, and I love it, and um, I wouldn't, and I think another reason what, what turned me on to photography is back when my father was alive in 2000, he died in 2008, of cancer between the liver and the gallbladder they had to put a shunt in but it really didn't do much for him and I remember that we only had one photo of us all together it was one of those mall photos photo kiosk where you put in five dollars and it literally prints it out on a four by six probably like a four by six probably about that big and, um, he had that in his wallet for years. And that, and that's the only photo we had of us all together. And from the time that I was four, we, that photo was taken when I was four years old. And that's the only photo we have of all of us together. And for me, it was like, Okay, I'm good with photography. I want to run my own business. I don't want to work for somebody else. I knew this from very early. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. My mom's like in the back of my head, going in my brain and telling me, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. You know, you need to do something with your life. Go to school, do something. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna open my own. In a couple of years, I'm gonna open my own photography business. She got off my back and I've been doing photography. You know, she said, you're a natural at it as it is anyway. Go ahead and do it. I said, um, and I literally watched videos time and time again. Took photos, watched more videos on the topics that I was feeling like I was struggling with when I was outside. This is back when I was shooting JPEG. I shoot nothing but raw now. Um, yeah, and I literally just shot, fixed, shot, fixed, shot, fixed it, shot, fixed it, figured out how, what happened in the back of the camera and how I could fix it. And, um, that's literally how it happened. 
and I figured out that there was some happy accidents, and I went on to investigate what caused those happy accidents. And then I went from auto, no, not even auto, I went directly to aperture priority. I didn't start in auto, I went directly to aperture priority. I said there's no point in me starting in auto. I went direct because I already did auto on my other camera. So now I want to dig deeper. So I went directly into aperture priority and shutter priority and then I went in and I, I kind of remembered, I wrote notes as I was doing it. And I remember that when I was doing it, I was watching the shutter speed in the aperture. I would give it the aperture of F, between F4 and F5 point, F4 and F4.5 or 4.6 or something. And, or 5.6. Um, it was a very little aperture lens that's an 18 switch photo. Very aperture lens, and I remember when I did that, I played around with it, and I would see the shutter speed that I'd give. So I put it in manual. Failed tremendously with JPEG, and um, then I figured out what is this raw thing, and who, what program can produce the raw files. So then I found out Lightroom. And I was kind of scared to use Lightroom, but I thought it's a 10 day free trial. Um, and it's awesome. And this is back when I thought every time I open it, I need to start a new catalog. So I would delete all my catalogs. This is before I knew how catalogs worked. And I screwed myself over a couple times. And I started shooting more off from that time forward. And I said, Mom, we need to have Lightroom. Lightroom is the standard for photography for business. And I started, I started, I started paving my way for that year to become a professional photographer. And I literally shot almost everything. And uh, my photos at first weren't very good at all. And uh, they had the right, wrong white balance. They had this and that. I don't even I don't even usually touch white balance. Literally, I put it on PRE mode and I don't even touch it. Like usually, I I don't even touch my white balance. I adjust my white balance through my aperture and through my shutter speed and through my eye. So I don't normally take it out of PRE mode or program white balance because usually that's the closest one to whatever I'm shooting, whenever wherever I'm at. And, um, which means that you take your program and program it that way. And uh, I just program it by eye usually. And then, about a year later, I bought a new monitor. So I had a dual monitor computer set up. And I went in and saw that it had a 6500, it was an LG monitor, flat panel monitor. And I went in and did the adjustment on the flat panel monitor and it had a 6500 Kelvin preset and uh, I uh, I was going through some photos from uh, a guy here on YouTube called Mark Brown and he was talking about monitor calibration and he said use 6500 and get a monitor spider or some sort of calibrator and I'm like oh god what does those cost and I looked them up and they're about a hundred dollars, but I found one for about eighty dollars about a year later. And uh, when I started my business professionally, that's a per one of the first thing, one of the first two things I bought. And uh, I bought a thirty-five because thirty-five is the most common aperture, and I bought one at f two, so I bought the lower aperture one, and um, that's literally what I did. And um, I love low aperture lenses. I won't go anything lower than f 2.8. I mean, I won't go anything higher than f 2.8. I don't mess with the 4.6. I don't mess with the 5s. I don't mess with the 4s. I go all the way up, up from 1.8 all the way up to... And if you were to give me an f 1.2 lens, I would definitely take it. Um, anything higher higher than f 2.8 I don't take 
to me it's not worth it. It doesn't give me the clean quality I want. But anyway, yep. So that's how I got started in photography and those are kind of the way I look at things and the way I look at things when I purchase them. So and now I'm getting into flash now I'm more of a natural light shooter right now and I'm getting into uh, in the next couple of actually like, hmm, in the next three to four months I'm actually getting into flash photography studio setup and everything like that so I'm going from one evil to another evil flash so because I understand natural lights so now it's time to introduce some flash into it and I've already done some reading on it and whatnot so literally that's what I'm going to do and I'm, I'm excited to uh, move forward and open a studio when those are my plans for the upcoming years. Appreciate you guys watching and have a great day. Bye bye.